Thank goodness for food delivery apps during the pandemic. We were all stuck at home and hungry, but all we had to do was pull out our phone, pick a place and voila, dinner on demand at your doorstep. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I feel safe going out now, I think I'll check out my favorite food delivery spot. Well, you could be out of luck. Your favorite place may not actually even be a place. It could be a ghost kitchen, but it's not as spooky as it sounds. Where we are is at one of our franchisee kitchens for the local culinary. We're the first virtual restaurant franchise company in the USA. It's a business model that is very relevant to today and it's based on a convergence of a lot of things like technology has come of age, uh, the pandemic situation, changing dining habits of people, and the accessibility to a lot of different brands by way of applications and, and search engines. Jeff Sanchez has been in the culinary and restaurant business for over 40 years, but a lot has changed since he started. Tables, gone. Servers, gone. Customers, well, there's plenty of them thanks to the pandemic. But now it's only delivery, and the menus are driven by data. What people want is what they make. A customer is hungry for wings, and they open up their app looking for a wing delivery. Well, the operator may not have in the past sold wings. However, now they are able to because we have onboarded them with the skills and the know-how of how to deliver wings out of their existing restaurant. The customer really doesn't know where that uh, was produced. However, they receive it by way of a third-party delivery system. Chef Sanchez says ghost or virtual kitchens help an existing food operation create a lot of delivery favorites without a lot of the traditional overhead needed to sell, say, burgers, gyros, poke bowls, and breakfast bagels at separate restaurants. Multiple food options and cuisines are sold and delivered from a single location with as little as three employees on site. We, of course, have noticed a change in dining habits. People are interested in fresher, healthier, ethnic choices. And a customer would nev never know uh, that this came out of an operator that is producing many other different brands at the same time. We give them up to 50 different brands that they can sell online with only having a limited inventory of product. This isn't the only kind of ghost or virtual kitchen. Sometimes the delivery apps themselves are contacting your favorite local restaurant to see if they would be interested in selling certain dishes for delivery only, even if it's not on their normal menu. The app creates a ghost brand name, say, NBC LX Chicken Wings, and the customer has no idea it's not from a real restaurant. Some companies like Reef Technology are setting up mobile kitchens in vacant parking lots in targeted neighborhoods with small staffs to meet demand for specific cuisines. With all this virtual talk, I decided to actually visit a traditional restaurant owner to see how they felt about this growing trend. Happy one started around uh, 15 years ago. Uh, my wife and I would be here for what? Almost 13. We specialize in wines, and you can see around is all the walls are surrounded with wines from all over the world. And we serve with some uh, small dishes of tapas, tapas, paninis, little sandwiches, and that's our main focus. When the pandemic hit, like a lot of places, Happy Wine was forced into the food delivery model in order to survive. But now that some of the COVID-19 dining restrictions are loosening up and people are slowly coming back out to eat, JC says he faces a new hurdle in his restaurant's recovery, these ghost kitchens and the growing food delivery model. 
When it comes down to delivery, definitely it's here to stay. What we have a problem is now it's a huge, it's becoming like a monopoly from like a company like Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash, because they are taking over the other competitors and it's becoming a monopoly. And that's gonna create uh, those negative effects, especially independent restaurants, because they're gonna raise their, um, their commission fees and the bottom line is gonna affect us. And the customer too, because the customer these days are paying more and more money. JC isn't the only one worried about the impact of food delivery companies. Last year, a class action lawsuit was filed in New York's Southern District. It alleges the companies have obtained monopoly power with which they've given consumers and restaurants, quote, little choice but to do business with them, end quote. I reached out to the big delivery app brands to get their take on the monopoly claims. They turned down the chance for interviews, but all stated that their aim is to help their restaurant partners grow by providing flexibility in the food delivery space. Grubhub stated, quote, virtual restaurants are delivery only concepts that Grubhub has long supported from our restaurant partners. DoorDash, who is no longer included in the class action suit, told me more diners are craving the convenience and delight of on-demand delivery. And this model empowers any restaurant to reach more customers wherever they are. Uber Eats doesn't comment on active litigation, but said, we do not own or operate any ghost kitchens or delivery only facilities. We do appreciate the business of every restaurant who chooses to partner with Uber Eats. The restaurant industry makes up 10% of the overall US workforce. 70% of restaurants are mom and pop places run by people who began their careers in entry level positions. And restaurants employ more minority managers than any other industry. So what happens to this workforce if our dining trends continue on this trajectory? What's the future for independent owners and their staffs? The answer depends on who you ask. Restaurants are not gonna go away. Traditional restaurants are never gonna go away. However, there is a new generation of consumer that has different ordering habits, different eating habits, and different expectations. I have faith that us, we're here to stay because we put we put our best product every day. And I know a lot of operators, not just in Miami, all over the United States, are doing the same thing. They learn from the pandemic, and they're doing, they put in more and more efforts. So we're here, even if the ghost kitchens are coming in, we're gonna put a good fight to keep our business alive.